Jesus is asked in Matthew 22 to sum up the great command of the law, and he does. In verses 37 through 39, he gives us two commands, the first of which being the great command, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Essentially, everything we are needs to glorify and worship God. May the prayer of our heart and the direction of our lives be the same as the psalmist in Psalm 103 when he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I want to talk to you today about idolatry and really idol smashing, getting rid of the things that stand in God's rightful place out of there. The Bible says about idolatry, we're supposed to keep away from it, we're supposed to flee from it, and we're also supposed to put it to death in our own lives. Do you love Jesus? He loves you immeasurably. No matter how many times you stumble or fall, He is there. He is there to pick you up. He is there to bless you and encourage you and help you grow in this long marathon of a race. So I pray this is a blessing. First John, I'm very intrigued by the ending of this epistle. In chapter 5, verses 20 and 21, a very, very abrupt ending, it reads, We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. All right, and that's it. That's the end of the book. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. And John speaks to various age groups throughout this letter. And here we have children who need the most basic things, the, the milk of the word, the basic foundation, the structural integrity <laughs> that builds up. Um, and we have here, keep yourselves from idols. So very basic, and yet we need to do it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 also states, flip over there, chapter 10, verse 13 and 14. It states that we need to flee from idolatry, and I'll read here. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. And we're not supposed to ignore it. We're not supposed to shun it. We're not supposed to have an apathy toward it or even excuse it and justify it. We're supposed to flee from it. Thankfully, God has provided a way out so that we can flee from it. But it's on our own responsibility if we decide to flee from it or decide to indulge in sin. We need to flee from idolatry. In Corinth, there were so many things that could ensnare you in sin. We had lust, drinking to excess, improper relationships, idol worship, idol feasts. And in our own lives, we have unique temptations. God is faithful, though. He can provide you a way out, and he does. And we need to trust in that. We need to choose that path and, again, flee from idolatry. Get out of there. Idolatry is one of the acts of the sinful nature, as Galatians states. And Colossians 3, 5, and 6, we're supposed to put it to death. I want to read you these verses in Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, which read, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. And really, when we choose the sin over God, because God has told us what to do, He's given us commands, he has created us. He knows what's best for us and what would uh, result in the best amount of glory for him and the best result for us. And yet, if we choose the sin, that's idolatry. We're exalting that over God. It's so dear to God's heart for us to be in a right relationship with him and have him as our number one. Exodus 20, I'm going to turn back to the Ten Commandments, reminding you, num number one here, it reads Exodus chapter 20, verses 2 and 3. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. No other gods. God is a jealous God. He desires our affection. He loves us so sacrificially. He provided his son Jesus as a sacrifice for our sins so that we could be reconciled and brought back to him. That's how much he loves us. Anything in the place of God in our lives, get rid of it. Readjust it. These can even be good things. We can construct these blessings of God to be idols. We can worship the created things instead of the Creator, and that's dangerous. We need to focus on the gift giver and worship God, because He gives good and perfect gifts, and those gifts are not meant to be worshipped. <laughs> so again, number one needs to be Jesus. So take some time and examine your heart. If there's an idol there, whether it's obvious or whether it's latent, you need to get rid of it. We have to focus on Jesus, keep Him number one. 
And again, as scripture says, we're supposed to keep from idols. We're supposed to flee from them. And we're supposed to put them to death in our own lives. And if God has granted you blessings in life, cherish those. We're not supposed to just cast out every gift because they're potential idols. We're supposed to love and cherish the gift giver and appreciate and thank him for the gifts he's given us. But again, they can't be idols in our lives. And may God grant you the desire to know and love him more. May he grant you victory as you flee from idolatry. May we rely on him for strength, not in our own strength and flesh, but may we be empowered by his Holy Spirit to do amazing things for his name and his kingdom. May we be more than conquerors through him who loved us, Jesus Christ. Again, don't let idols enter your life, and if they're there, smash them. Get rid of them. And may we have purity of heart and focus on him like never before. God bless you.